Lord, we magnify your holy name. We thank you for bringing us into your presence this evening. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, King. We thank you for safe journey. We thank you for preservation of life. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you because we are alive. Thank you because we are not in the mortuary. Father, we say thank you.
before your majesty. We bow before your throne, O oh God, in reverence of who you are. You are big and mighty. You are the awesome God. You are the ruler of the earth. You are the ruler of the heavens. You are the captain of us all. You are the first begotten from the dead. We worship your majesty. Father, we join the four living beings with the others, those of heaven, the host of the earth, in worshiping you. Father, we testify that there is no life unto you, God. You will search through all the earth to God and find there is no like you, God. There is no like you, God. Suffering children are safe in your hands to God. There is no like unto you, God. There is no like unto you, God. We bless your holy name, Father. Let our praise and our worship ascend unto you as a sweet smell is our home. Let it come unto you as a sweet smell is our God. Let the lips, let the, the, the worship of our lips, O God, the sacrifice of our lips that we offer unto you, O God, let it be pleasing, O God. Let it be pleasing before you, O God.
up by 7.30. Let's um, um, continue where we stopped last um, last Wednesday. Um, and those of us who have been following, those online and those physically present, we've been uh, dissecting this book by Bishop David Oedipo, Understanding Financial Prosperity. We have looked at part one, we have looked at part two, today we're going to part three. And part one talked about the foundation for prosperity. And there were five things that were talked about under the foundation for prosperity. The, the foundation, what is what is the base, what you know is laid that you build on. The first is the covenant dimension of prosperity. The fact that prosperity is a covenant, and if you're going to enjoy it, you must participate in the covenant. The second part is consecration. You must be consecrated to God. If you are going to enjoy financial prosperity, it has to be God type or God ordained or God led type of prosperity. Closely followed is the dedication. You must be dedicated to your task. You must, the Bible says, says that a man diligent in his business will stand before kings, will not stand before mean men. And then affection and addiction. And so you see that it's graduating when you are concentrated to God, you are dedicated to his service, you do it out of affection, out of joy. The Bible says, with joy shall you draw from the well of salvation. You do it with joy. The Bible says that because you have not served God with the gladness of your heart, uh, it says you serve your enemies. It's in chapter 28. So we do it with affection. And of course, your affection, when you consistently do it, becomes an addiction. You are sold out to the things of the kingdom. You are a kingdom addict. Praise the Lord. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Are you following? So those five are the foundation for prosperity. And then we looked at part two. Our part two says that why does God prosper? Why does God prosper? We saw three reasons why God prospers. The first reason is that God prospers you to be a blessing to your generation. You are prospered to can be, you can be a blessing. You, you can be a channel of blessing to your generation. So God prospers us to be a blessing to the to our generation. Secondly, God prospers us for his kingdom's sake. So your prosperity comes into your hand for sake of the kingdom. And just to mention, um, you know, we'll be trusting God to move out of this place and I just got a good news today. And we are keyed in. It looks as though we might have found somewhere suitable, not too far from this place. So join your faith to mind to believe that we'll secure that place. And um, we'll be calling on you, calling on your pocket, calling on your pocket, calling on your, po your pocket, calling on your substance. So God prospers you. So that deal that is coming your way, that breakthrough that is coming, is for the sake of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. When God, when Jesus sent the two disciples to go into the city and say, you see a call that is tied, has not been laid upon, lose it. And when they ask of you, why what do what means thou these days? Say unto them what? The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord had need of it. And straightway they let go. So the Lord had need of your resource. And so God blesses you for sake of the kingdom. And number three, God blesses you so that you can be a blessing to the poor. The Bible says that the poor you will you will always have. So God gives you a substance so that you can be a blessing to the next guy that does not have. Uh, don't shut your don't shut your bowels. To those who have need, the Bible says that he that giveth to the poor lendeth to the Lord, and or, or certainty shall receive back of that which he has sold much more. Hallelujah. So, when you're a blessing to your generation, you're a blessing to humanity, you're a blessing to the kingdom, you're a blessing to the poor around you. And by the way, the poor around you does not necessarily be. Does not necessarily mean the guy who is walking on the street naked. The poor can just be somebody who is lacking at that moment in time. Any kennity over Nipa, but she don't love of who no lady gave you red. Oh, you red. So, whoever you have the means to be a blessing to, like the parable that Jesus shared of the Good Samaritan who encountered someone that fell into the bandits, into the hands of the bandits, and was wounded, and who says he was left as though dead. And so this good Samaritan ministered and took care of that person. Um, you know, that person is your neighbor. That person is the poor in that circumstance. And it's so instructive because uh, the priest passed, the Levite passed. And the interesting thing to note 
is that the priest will say, I don't want my garment to be stained. The Levite will say that I'm a praise lifter. I need to quickly get to church because I need to lift praise. But Jesus showed through that parable that what is more important is the kingdom and not the church. So the kingdom service is equivalent to whatever it is that you might want to do in church. So um, again, somewhere in the, in, in, Jesus mentioned that um, the Pharisees will say that, oh, the substance I will have used to be a blessing to you is dedicated to God. It's called command. What's that stuff? This is at your mistake. Because when you minister to the little, you also administer to me. Hello? Hi, Are you still with me? Yes, so when God blesses you, and I'm not saying you should now, you know, say, well, uh, the text I will have given, I, I use it to do offering because there's offering, there's tithe, there's the seed, there's the kingdom seed. So the point is for the church, the church should, should seek to be a blessing to people that are massing world. Praise the Lord. So that's the second part. So part three, we'll jump into part three today because this month we have to conclude, um, we have to conclude the, this book this month. We don't want to carry it into next month. I want it to end with this quarter. So I will take the principles and run with it and I'm trusting God that every one of us will have testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. So part three talks about the covenant platform for prosperity. There are four covenant platforms for prosperity. Covenant platform for prosperity. So if you have the book, you can open to page 137, the covenant platform for prosperity. And the first one I want to talk about is the word. The word. So chapter 10 says that the seed is the word. The seed is the word. And let me just give some preamble. And um, of course, in the course of giving the preamble, um, I will touch on some of these things. And like I said severally, most of these things, if not all, are things that you might have heard me talk about in the past. Or you might have had, you know, minister preach about or read about, or something you yourself are familiar with. Praise the Lord. So the, 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 the covenant, the seed is the word. When you're talking about the platform, it simply means that the, 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 um, the, the springboard, the platform upon which prosperity will come to you. So the word is absolutely important. You know why? Because everything that is required to produce is locked up in the word. Everything that is required to produce is locked up in the word. The word of God is efficacious. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is living. The word of God is alive. John chapter 6 and verse 3. Let's just give the example. And those of us who are on the prayer line or who join the prayer line, um, um, yesterday, was it yesterday was my prayer? Yeah, it was my turn. The thing with which we used to pray was the infallibility of the word of God. The infallibility of the word of God. And that was what we used to pray. That was what the, the, the Holy Spirit prompted me to pray with. And some of those scriptures, we you look at them. Are you there? Technically, it's not there. John chapter 6 and verse 63. Technically, it's asleep. She didn't hear what I said. You are missing your big brother. Where is he anyway? What are you doing in my office? We are sharing that office. Don't worry. We are moving to our real home. You have your own uh, technical area. You must stay in my office. And it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh has no profit. The words that I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit and life. So the word of God is spirit. Just as you are a spirit, you have a soul and you live in the body. So the word of God is equivalent to you. The word of God is spirit because God is spirit. So the words that God speaks, they are spirit and they are life. They, so the seed of the word has a life in itself. It is sustained. It has a life sustaining capability. The word of God has a life sustaining capability. Do you know that the maize or corn, the three, four, uh, crumbs of corn that you put to the ground it has life in itself that's why when you when you plant it it sprouts and brings it and it comes forth because the ability for life is in is locked up in that seed the same thing is the word that's why bishop says that the seed is the word the word of god is that seed that when sown onto the fertile ground will produce 
the word of God, when properly appropriated and when properly applied, when applied in the right sense on the fertile ground, has nothing but to produce. And that's why he said in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11, Isaiah 55 verse 11, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. The word of God is not permitted to return to God void. If it's spoken the same way God says it's not permitted to return void, it's also when the word of God comes out of your mouth by faith, in faith, and it is properly applied, it cannot return void. It shall accomplish that which I please and shall prosper in that thing which I have sent it. So it must prosper. What are we talking about? Prosperity. So the word of God has the ability to prosper. Is somebody still here? Yes. The word of God has the ability to prosper. It carries every capability for prosperity. The word of God, when properly applied, when properly used, has the capacity to prosper. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. So all the scriptures are speaking to the infallibility of the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Are you there? This book of the law, that is, you know, this is when Joshua was saying this was Old Testament, right? The, the scriptures. The Bible, the word of God, shall not depart out of your mouth. What should you do? You are to meditate on this word of God day and night. You are to chew it. You are to ponder on it. You are to consume it. You are to digest it. You are to allow the word to enter you. We are still going to Job chapter 22. Where it says that take he take his word. So you are supposed to meditate on it day and night that thou mayest observe, and this is it. So when you take the word and it is appropriately applied, observe to do according to all that is written therein, for thou shalt make your way what? Prosperity. Prosperity. It is in the word that is applied, the word that is sown, the word that is sown that brings prosperity. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt obtain good success. So the word of God is the seed. So when you locate the word of God concerning you, so when the word of God, Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse, I think verse 13, Deuteronomy 28, 13 says that I shall am the head and not the tail. You use that word to bring you, you, you wrestle with that word and you batch that reality of the scriptures. You will lend, you will not borrow. You will batch that word. Look for it. If it's not 13, it's maybe 12. You bat, you bat. And we started as a police. You told me 20. Okay, she said it's 28. 28. Uma was making me look. It's 28. She went to do it. 28, 13. You bat, you bat that stuff by what you declare. You'll be above and not beneath. So, it is the word of God that you receive, the word of God that you have, the word of God that you apply, the word of God that you make, the word of God that you have, you have consumed that has now become part of you. Like I always say, I have grace for academic excellence. I know, I know that I know that I know that I cannot fail. Where academics or things around that is concerned, I cannot. Are you still with me? So, it is the word of God that you receive, that you run with, that makes a difference. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. So, the word is the seed. Let's look at one more place. Um, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Hebrews. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Can you, do you have a CEB, contemporary English version? Do you? You don't. NLT. Yes. Okay, project NLT where my wife can do you have CV. Take your mic and read CV for us. I like the of course I'm a KJB person though, so I have to have my love for KJB. <laughs> Other that's well, right? Yeah. Contemporary English version. Sorry. Okay, let's read NLT while you're trying to get C B. For the word of God is alive and powerful. 
Remember, we said that the word of God has a life. It has a life of its own. It has a life-giving ability. It is sharper than the two, sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between the soul and spirit, between joints and marrows. It exposes our innermost, innermost thoughts and desires. For the word of God is alive and powerful. See me. God's word is alive and powerful. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. His word can cut through our spirits and souls, and through our joints and marrow, until it discovers the desires and thoughts of our hearts. Praise the Lord. So that is the word of God. And the word of God is what is the seed. So even before we go into the book, I want you to have this understanding. Where prosperity is concerned, just like any other thing for that matter, healing, marriage, academic excellence, whatever it is, you know, you locate the word of God that speaks to that situation, and you bring it alive. Literally speaking, you make that word come alive. You make that word come alive. Third John chapter 1 and verse 2. There's only one, one chapter. It says that, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may as well prosper. Ah! God says he wishes above all things for me to prosper. Therefore, what is delaying or holding back my prosperity? The word is the seed. So you sow that word. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things to Christ that strengthens me. He says, I've learned to be a base, I've learned to abound them. He now says in verse 19, But my God shall supply your needs, all your needs, according to his power that will work. So you must lay hold on that word. Lord, supply my needs. So the word is the seed. And it is what you sow. What, remember, thank God for this church. Thank God for daily positive confession. It is what you declare with your mouth. What are you saying with your mouth? So perhaps you are a giver. Perhaps you are all of those things. But you are using your mouth to negate it. Maybe that may just be the missing link. Because rather than confessing positive, you are saying, I can't get that job. It's not for people like me. I can't. You, you use your mouth to negate everything. But rather to align align the world with what you are expecting or praying for. So we have read Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Um, and Bishop says that prosperity in the kingdom is on the platform of encounters with the Bible. The word of God is God's highway to the world of wealth. The word of God is God's highway to the world of wealth. The word of God is God's highway to the world of wealth. Job, uh, Job chapter 2, I said I was looking at Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace, therefore, who shall come unto you. Acquaint now thyself with him. How do you acquaint yourself with him? By going into the word, by searching what the Bible says. Receive, I pray, that the Lord from his mouth, and lay up his words in thy heart. When you do that, and you return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity from thy tabernacle. As you do these things, you will lay up gold as dust, and the gold of buffer as the stones of the brooks. The God kind of prosperity begins with receiving the law and laying up his words in your heart. Because God's word is what leads to the world of wealth. It is God's gateway to heavenly blessings. It is your encounter with God's commandments that make you a commander. When you encounter the word of God, and you receive the rema, not just the logos, logos, not just a sense knowledge of it. When you allow that word to sink in, when you ruminate on it and meditate on it, when you digest it, when you when you ponder on it. Because the question to ask is that why are some people making it, some people are not making it? The difference is the level of light they have encountered in the place of the world. Some people still struggle with giving. Because they don't understand what the scripture says about giving. Some people give, but they're not giving from the point of, you know, remember the, the foundation? They're not giving from the point of dedication, affection, um, consecration, addiction. They're not giving from the point of love. They're not giving because they just want to do it. They are giving from the point of kalu kalu. So, um, Luke 6. That is, give and shall be given unto you. Good measure, present, you get together, run over. So they are giving from the point of, as I give now, I give 1,000, God will give me 10,000. It doesn't work like that. So God is not a vending machine. God is not a jackpot. God is not Baba Jebu. God is not uh, Bet Niger or Naira Bet or, uh, you know, which, which one is a culture zone? That's not God. Bet King. God is not Bet King. 
where you say okay, pam pam pam, small banker like PSG and uh, uh, Real Madrid playing today, you go and place that okay. No, that's not God. You do it from the point of love. Let me shock you. Sometimes when you do certain things, if the reward may not appear immediately. That's the difference between where you manage expectation. Because when you do it to God, 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 you do it to God. You don't even, you are not even thinking about it. It is your nature, it becomes your second nature. So that's the difference. Because when you sow the word, you do it based on what the scripture says. Because you are feeling, God says God loves a cheerful giver. You are giving cheerfully. Most times you, that you don't even remember the seed that you have been sown. It is those seeds that are so that God begins to recount and recall. So he says, it is your encounter with God's commandment that makes you a commander. When you encounter God in the place of the world that says that you cannot lack, you, can, you cannot be a beggar, you cannot live in penury or poverty, or that you are totally dry and out and flat, check your life. The problem is not God. It cannot be God because God is a constant key and if other people are testifying it means that it is working for them just check your life if there's a sin in me lord i repent of my sin if i've been swimming my seat to the wrong ground that is not a vital ground that is not that is not god ordained you know i've, I've shared this with you several times that sometimes i'm quote and unquote i'm reckless my giving sometimes i just be saying that you know this one will be this one will be me sent you i said let me say myself so don't expect any reward from this one. Don't expect me to bless this. So I've learned anyway in the last few years, I've learned to be a bit more circumspect. Because if you want God's blessing, it has to be as God has ordained or God has instructed. I've several, several, you know, several in this church. There was one guy that said his mother is critically ill in the hospital. What's the night vigil? We've just reached a night vigil or something, and the guy just showed up and said he needed to travel to a fair. That morning, any moment that the mother is critical, in fact, so I gave him some money. About three, four hours later, I called him, he said he has, he has arrived before now. The mother is there. I said, oh, really? Say, what's the name of the doctor? The guy was stammering. I said, okay, where's the name of the hospital? He was stammering. I said, coincidentally, I have a doctor friend in Ife. Um, tell me the name of the hospital. Let me tell my doctor. The guy just got the phone. <laughs> Oh, the guy just got the wood and uh, that was the last I saw him. So the guy has carried costs on his head. Since he used his mother to lie, he will call my go and fall sick now. You don't know that that is some But do you want me that this one is just come to do for me for you? But I said, ah, just in case. Just in case he said the truth. Just in case. After this we said his line and I'm doing it just in case. <laughs> so you have to be careful. When you become a word of ritual, you become an automatic commander. It is your encounter with his commandments that makes you a commander. That is your gateway to heaven's blessings. Amazing, unmistakable, and undeniable blessing. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 14, which we read in just a few parts of it. We don't have time to read all. At outlines, you know, it says that. And all these blessings, verse 1. And shall come to pass, if thou shalt act intelligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all these commandments, all these blessings shall follow you. And he gave a list of all those blessings, right? And one of them is the one we talked about in verse 13. Now, if you are a doer of the word, if you do the word automatically, because remember the very first thing we talked about the covenant. When you do your part of the covenant, God will do his part of the covenant. God. God is not a debtor. God does not owe any man. Once you have, your own part is complete, it sets in, in, in motion for his own part to be done. The Lord shall, the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Blessed shall thou be in the city, blessed shall thou be in the field, and the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure Amen. to give you rain in the season and all of those things, you know. The word is the way to world. God has packaged it so. That's why I said that this book is the gateway. The, the, the Bible is the gateway to world. Is the answer to the is the answer 
It is the answer book for prosperity. Anything that can help your understanding of this book is an asset for your destiny. So let's have an understanding. Let's grab the word. Let's sit down with the word. Let's understand what the word says. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for the light is come. And what is the light? The light is the word of God. Because the Bible says in Psalm 1 and verse 130, the entrance of your word giveth light, giveth understanding to the simple. So the word of God is the light. Is the light that lightens your way. Arise, shine, for the light is come. The light refers to scriptural illuminations that help you appreciate the divine truth. The word of God is the light. And once the light, uh, once you receive Rema, let me put it this way. Once you read the Bible and Rema, that is the revelation, when the revelation jumps at you, you run with it. Yesterday, like I said, when I was preparing for the prayer, listen, I went to look at because. I have my wife, but let me have her again. She always said that I speak, I speak big, big uh, English. So I wanted to be sure that that, because we said infall infallibility of God's word. I said this one, we say, are you sure this word is, exists? So I went to go and check it out. Infallibility from the word infallible. Infallibility of God's word. Let me shock you. The example that he gave is the Pope. He said that the, just like the Pope, he has, he has a dispensation to make pronouncement, to make some doctrinal pronouncements, and it's incapable of error. Says that the doctrinal pronouncements of Paul is incapable of error. That is, you can't go and tell Paul, sir, with due respect, you know, this pronouncement is not correct. Even if it's not correct, you are sent like that. Says that the doctrinal pronouncements of Paul is incapable of error. So that it says that that's the reason that to give an example of the infallibility of God's word. If the word of a man because it's Pope, that they say it can, it's incapable of error, that it can't make mistake. When they say Pope, please, you don't understand this Bible, and it, it interprets like that, that's the interpretation. You can't say, ah, Pope, uh, with your experience, is correct. So if Pope is preaching, anything he preach is correct. That's the infallibility of the, uh, the doctrinal uh, dogma, the Pope. Can you imagine that? When I came across this, I started and I pondered on that. So, the Catholic believe that the Pope is incapable of doctrinal error. How much more God? The word of God, it is not possible for it to fall to the ground. The word of God is infallible. It is incapable of falling to the ground unfulfilled. The word of God is incapable of falling to the ground of food. What is the word of God that has been spoken to your life? I need you, to, I need your faith level to rise. That's the next chapter, but not today. I need your faith level to rise to measure to that place. You see that God, it is easier for everyone and earth to pass away, but not a title of your word will go unfulfilled. For you have exalted your word above your names. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is set to good. I need us to come to that realization that if it is the word of God, if God has said it, the only time when it doesn't come to pass is when you have not believed it. Is when you have not accepted it. Is when you have refused for it to be what it is, the word of God. See all these places we read. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 11, uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse uh, 12, John chapter 6 verse 12. All these places talks about the word of God. It is quick and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God does not get tired on the way. Matthew 8, 8. John said that only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I have a man under authority. I said to one, come, he comes. I said to the one, go, and he goes. Jesus said, I have never seen a faith so great as this. That you, you recognize the fact that I can be in Nigeria and I can speak the word of healing to somebody in New Zealand. And that word travels from Nigeria to New Zealand. It doesn't get tired. It does not expire. It does not lose potency along the way. That word sustains itself because it's a life. It's a, it has life in itself because it is spirit and it is life. And so it is going. When it gets to a mountain, it becomes it, it, it becomes Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse, where is that place? That my word is like armor that breaketh the rock in pieces. So when it gets to the mountain, Jeremiah 1 12, it scatters it. When it gets to the tree, it becomes Hebrews 12. 
He did push for joy, becomes a sword, and he crossed it until he reaches his destination. He said, He must prosper in that which I have sent it. That's the word of God. May I stir up your faith to know that the word I was giving you 10 years ago, if it is the word of God, it still has potency for manifestation. Don't give up on God just yet. Don't don't call it quits just yet. Don't say it's not working and you back it up. Don't give up. It's not over. When you give up, then it's over. Hold on to the Lord. Even when you fall, it's not over. May I say to somebody that is online that is watching that the word of God is efficacious. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is living. The word of God is alive. The word of God is more real than you. The word of God is more real than you standing like this. I would rather hold on to the word of God than believe that Brother Obadji is wearing a red shirt. I believe the word of God more than I believe that he's wearing a red shirt. That's the word of God. Because the word of God liveth and abideth forever. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. For the word of God liveth and abided forever. forever. The word It doesn't change. No variableness, no shadow of turning. That's the word of God. So when we receive this word, this is a seed. When we receive the word, receive ye the word I pray thee from his mouth. Receive the word of liberty. They receive the word of prosperity and speak it, declare it. Open your mouth and say it. I can never be poor. I say, Pastor, you say you can never be poor. But you are still doing one, go one. Uh, see, the me you see today. Come and check me out in the next coming days. Because the faith I'm declaring now, I'll continue to declare. And when the physical manifestation comes, I'll remind you that you were a naysayer, you were, you were a mocker. When it has manifested, I'll show you. The word of God is a gateway to heaven's blessings. It's a covenant platform for kingdom prosperity. No short course. It is the word that creates the world. What do you do? You know, in, in, in Luke chapter 4 and verse 8, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had anointed me, excuse me, to declare the word, the good news. Gospel means good news. To declare the good news to the poor. The poor needs the good news. What's the good news? That Jesus had died for you. And he has done what? 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. For remember the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who though was rich, yet because of us, he took our poverty, that through his poverty we may be made rich. That is the good news. Please project it to because I just paraphrased. 2 Corinthians 8 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That ye, through his poverty, the exchange, this is the word, this is the seed. When you take this seed and say, Jesus, you became poor for me to become rich. Therefore, why should I still be poor? Hello? Hi, sir. If somebody, let's assume now, you went to a restaurant to eat, you ate 5,000 rand food. And now check, ah, your wallet is missing, it's lost. Ah, embarrassment day, oh boy, you can't do a co-bank pay, you can't do anything. And then Mr. Bayo shows up, ah, Mr. Bayo, you're a lifesaver, please sir, save me from this embarrassment. And Mr. Bayo says, what happened? I just ate now, and 5,000 mil. Mr. Bayo, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> So anyway, Mr. Bayo pays your 5K, and it gives you, your presence gives the barman or food man, say, this is for Sarah, we you know the carrier. Uh, we chop 5,000 hour food. She still this to me like this. Take the back key. Kish, what's your problem? <laughs> now, 
And Kish is the owner of the restaurant. Auntie Sarah, will Kish they ask you for money? No, it's not possible. And if he asks you, what you go do, Kish? <laughs> you want dirty slab. <laughs> Did you just see Mr. Bayo pay now? So, if that is the case, when the Bible says that he has carried our poverty, and he has, instead of our poverty giving us riches, why are we still allowed the devil to knock our head and keep us in the, the poverty mentality? Why are we allowing the devil to still keep us in the poverty mentality? Let me tell you, according to First Thessalonians chapter 1, I think, verse 3, you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in the body. So let, the real, let your reality be the spirit realm. Hello? Let your reality be the spirit realm. Don't let your reality be the physical realm. Because for as long as your reality is the physical realm, you will be confined to the things of the physical. The Bible says we walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. So let your reality be your, your spiritual realm. The fact that he has taken your poverty and he has given you just as like first, first Peter chapter 1 and verse 24 talks about the fact that he has taken your sickness, he has given you his health. So let that be your reality. And somebody say, Well, Pastor, when I get to now, there's still nothing to eat. Yes, I know. But that is not your reality. That is a, a passive phase. It's a phase that has come, you never find, and it came to stay. And let me also quickly tell you, how long you make that phase is also dependent on you. Because you can extend that phase out by doing all these things that are now in the scriptures. You can extend that phase, you can come out of that phase of perennial lack by doing these things that are in the scriptures. Do you eat when all, when money comes to you and you chop chop alone and die alone? I say I don't have to give. You have to give. You have something. I don't want to go back to what we talked about before because I want to try and wrap up it. You have to give. Never say you don't have to give. You have to give. When they call for the sins of the kingdom, do you stay where I say that uh John Canon Lolema Lolema donate? Those are the things you are using to elongate your stay in that want, in the world, that poverty state. But first receive the seed of the world. Let it enter your head. Once it enters your head and enters your subconscious and you digest it, you work in that in that reality, then you just simply can you become unstoppable. Become unstoppable. When you become a world operator, you become okay. Don't press that. So the gospel is preached to the poor. What is the gospel preached to the poor? The gospel of Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. That Jesus has taken your poverty. So why you still carry your property uh, your poverty about? The poor have the gospel preached to them. So it is the word that delivers men from, from poverty. You therefore need to encounter, you therefore need an encounter with the word and an eye-opening inside. Once you receive the word and you just jump, the one jump jumps at you. You get up and you run with it. A prominent man of God used to be very poor. But one day he encountered one little book written by Kenneth Hagin titled Redeemed from Sickness, Poverty and Death. And from the inside he contacted from that book, Poverty Fled. Hallelujah. Prosperity of your soul first. So, let's quickly, and okay, of course, a, a bishop gave an encounter, his own encounter in March, in March 1981, his encounter with the book by uh, Gloria Copeland and the, the book is titled God's Will is Prosperity. And he said, after digesting that book and spending three days, he had an encounter and he declared to himself, I can never be poor. I can never and it was a very backed up by light. And he says, poverty ended in my life for that day. Once we have that understanding, we are wrong with it. The prosperity of your soul determines your overall prosperity in life. And the word is what prospers the soul. Until your soul prospers by the word of God, your life can't taste prosperity. Now, let me take a few moments to point on this. And that's actually part of what I've talked about. Remember, the soul is the seat of your will, your emotion, and your intellect. The soul is the seat of your will, your emotions, and your intellect. So, please, may I beg you, may I beg you, do not allow your intellect, your, your, your sense, to stand in the way of what God is doing in the spirit realm. Because if you use your intellect, you want to ration, you want to reason everything out. You want to, you want to um, be able to rationalize and explain everything. And you want to be able to say that, you know, it is a, 
when you sow this, I sow that. Please, can somebody prove, uh, project Psalm 27 verse 13? Just drop my spirit one now. Psalm 27 verse 13. Your intellect will tell you what? That sin is believing. True? Your mind, your intellect will tell you, a rational man, a reasonable man, a man that says sin is believing. When I see it, I believe it. The spirit term, the spirit term says that believe, then you see. I have fainted unless I had believed to see. So believe preceded seeing. I have fainted except I believed to see. So you step out in faith before you see. Your intellect tells you, see, then you believe. Until I see Minister Titi, when he says that uh, your wife is around, her, he's wearing red. No, I don't believe you. When I see her, then I'll see she's wearing red. That is not from the spirit. That's not from the step of faith. You must believe what Kisha said, that he said the truth. And then when you see her, you see that he's wearing red. I had fainted unless I had believed to see. Seeing is believing is the, is the, what do you call it? The intellectual. But the faith is that believe, then you see. So the soul. You need to work on your soul. You need to work on your intellect. You need to work on your mindset. You need to align your mind. You must align your mind with the things of the spirit. Because that is where the battle is. Your mindset. Do you know that even when you are doing 101 or 010 or whatever you are doing, do you know that you can still be doing that and you have a, 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 a rich man mindset, a prosperous man's mindset? Meanwhile, somebody that is in one 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 may still have a poverty mindset. It is how you program your mind and you see it work out for you. So that's why Bishop says that the prosperity of the soul is a, is the first thing. You must ensure that you see yourself. Remember those spies? They said that we saw ourselves in our own eyes. We saw ourselves as grasshoppers. So were we in the eyes. We saw ourselves as the moment we saw ourselves as grasshoppers, they saw us as grasshoppers. We for we saw ourselves as grasshoppers, so were we in their eyes. You see, so the sons of Anna. So it is what you have called yourself. Say somebody said the way you are dressed, the way you be addressed. So if you if you see yourself as cannot make it, God cannot help you. As he has spoken in my ears. You have said that you are poor. So so can we work on our mindset? Yes, sir. Can we change our mindset? Yes. Can we not be? Can we not operate by the law of sight? Can we operate by the law of faith? Can we say to ourselves? I remember those songs we used to sing in Afala Bleshi. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. My father is rich. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. So can you say that to yourself even when you don't have a time in your bank account? And Bishop said that when he declared that I can never be poor, he says that he did not have any time in his bank account at that time. But it's a mindset. Let everybody know. Let people around you know. Let the devils know. Prosperity of your soul determines your overall prosperity in life. And the word is what prospers the soul. Until your soul prospers by the word of God, your life can't take taste prosperity. The prosperity of your soul by the word is what results in your outward prosperity in life. The prosperity of your soul by the word is what results in your outward prosperity in life. The prosperity of the soul is nothing but the revelation of the word of God. Please understand that there is nothing called luck. You are down because you lack light. When you encounter appropriate light in the area where you are walking in darkness, you will shine as a star. Get to sit down, sit down with the word of God. Locate the word of God concerning that area and ask God for light, ask God for illumination. Ask God to grant you remark. Once you have the word of God, you have the revelation of the word of God, go to God and give him back his word. Take his words and turn to God. Give him back his word and say, in this area, in this area, in this area, in this area, see what will happen. It is that is what it is. It is your responsibility. 
Don't be defeated in your mind. Once you are defeated in your mind, even God cannot help you. Don't ever be defeated in your mind. Don't ever think that the problem is unsurmountable. Don't ever get to the point where you just throw your hands up and say, I am finished. Once you say, I am finished, the angel that will be fighting will just say, Ah, I'm going to help you finish. <laughs> don't get to that point. Yes, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. Pastor, you don't know how much I'm going. Pastor, I agree, I understand that. But do not use your own mouth to kill yourself. You may have faced embarrassment. I don't know. I don't care. You may have been, you know, but the moment you admit that you are finished, that's all. The prosperity of your soul by the world is what results in your outward prosperity in life. It is your wonderful insight contracted from the word of God that make you a wonder in the kingdom. Supernatural supplies don't answer to prayers. It answers to insight. The supernatural supplies does not answer to prayer. It answers to insight. Let me balance that. That is not to say you shouldn't pray. But prayer not backed up effectively by the word. So you receive the light and illumination of the word to do what you have to do. Once you are a doer of the road, the prayer is automatic. In fact, you do not need to pray because once you do the principle, the supply will come. It is your wonderful insight contracted from the word of God that makes you wonder in the kingdom. The adventure to the realm of supernatural world requires you sitting down to prosper your soul first so that your life can prosper. Please take this and listen to it very carefully. The adventure into the realm of supernatural world requires you sitting down to prosper your soul first so that your life can prosper also. That's what it takes. Mission says that it's not your money. The world seed is what controls all forms of increases in your human endeavors, not your money. Abraham only heard the world and acted upon it and he prospered. There was no monetary transaction involved, but money came by act of obedience. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, God said to Abraham, Get thee out of the hall, the chalice, and go to the land I will show you. Abraham obeyed God. Abraham took God's word literally. Abraham believed God. The Bible said that it was accounted to him for what? Righteousness. Abraham took the word of God and believed it, and by reason of that obedience, that unlocked everything that needed to bring about prosperity, including money. Because by chapter 13, God spoke, called Abraham in chapter 12. By the first and second verse of the next chapter, the Bible says that and Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Why? Because he obeyed God. Abraham did not have a seed to sow. He had obedience and he had a mindset that believed God. And that's why Abraham walked out, he literally, literally walked out of certainty to uncertainty. Abraham was comfortable with living in his father's house. Abraham was comfortable eating his father's food. Abraham was comfortable, you know, being protected by his father. When God said, come out of the all the charities, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, come to a land that I will show thee, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and that shall be a blessing. Abraham, quote and unquote, you can use the word, Abraham was gambling. But it was not a gamble. It was the fact that Abraham believed God. Abraham, had his, Abraham took a step of faith. Abraham did not allow his head to walk because if his head came in, so I mean, has God ever called anybody like you before? Do you know that you need to have a plan B just in case God fills you? Do you know you need to tell your father that you are not really going home, you are just come, you go, you are just, you know, just want to go and sight and you come back? But he did not allow his head to, to mess up with what God said to him. And because he obeyed God in total, by the following chapter, he had acquired cattle, silver, and gold. The world, not money, is the platform upon which we prosper in the kingdom. Every time you talk about prosperity and God's blessings, you talk about the word of God that applies to produce the money. So the word of God produces the money. When you when you appropriate the word of God properly, the resource that is required comes. God said, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently act to the voice of the Lord your God, once you act to the voice of God, you are blessed your body, you are blessed in your city, you are blessed outside the city, 
you will learn always, you will never borrow, you are the head, you are not the tail, you are above, you are not beneath. These are the promises of God. So go for the word. The word is the seed. The seed is the word. Everywhere you see, everywhere you see God talk about prosperity, the word of God is the foundation. And when you respond with excitement to every demand of the scripture, whatsoever you do, it shall prosper. For finances to multiply and increase your heart, you have to prosper in revelation of the word of God concerning finances. Let me take that again. For finances to multiply and increase your hand, you have to prosper in revelation of the word concerning finances. So sit down with the Bible. Find out what God is saying concerning finances. Find out what God is saying concerning prosperity. And digest it. Meditate on it. Let it sink in. Let it hit you like, bah! Now what? I've been young. Now I'm old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken. Nor is seed begging bread. I refuse to beg bread. Let it enter. Get, get angry. The psalmist says, I've been young, now old. I've not seen the righteous. I've never seen one time when the righteous was forsaken or where the righteous was begging bread. So it is an anomaly for me to beg bread. When you enter, when you encounter those, those scriptures, you, you get angry and you, you, you declare. God does not prosper you on the grounds of cash. He prospers you on the grounds of the light in which you are walking. Job 22. Receive and pray to the law. Receive the law. Receive the word of God. When you receive the word of God and you run with it, it assures you of prosperity. I want to wrap up because of time. We'll continue. Um, we'll continue next Wednesday. Look at the second platform, which is the which is faith. And then we'll give the microphone to Sister Faith since it's her name. And she's the, she's the one. So we're talking about faith next Wednesday. So Sister Faith, come and talk about faith next Wednesday. But as we wrap up, or as we just by way of summary, remember the word of God is living and efficacious. The word of God that you declare will produce life. It's a spirit, it's a life giving spirit. The word of God is a life-giving spirit. The word of God will pass whatever it is that we want. So don't pursue money. Pursue God. Sit down and locate what God is saying concerning you. As you do that, as you run with the word, God will produce. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. So get it right. Settle down with the word. Let it sink in. Let it sink in. Meditate. Says that this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. That you must meditate day and night. That thou mayest observe to do all that is according to it. That you may prosper and obtain good success. Let us pray. Can we just pray and ask God and say, Father, I want to be, I want to be sold out to the word of God. I want the word of God to be the final arbiter. I want to change my mindset. Let the word of God, let it begin to affect me, to change my mindset, to change my orientation, to change my confession, to change my thinking, to change my actions, to give me a brand new perspective to prosperity. Let the word of God that I encounter grant me brand new perspective to prosperity, to finances, to increase, to enlightenment. Let me understand that the word is what produces. And when I'm a doer of the world, the same shall prosper. It says that he that is a doer of the world, the same prospers in all his ways. He that is a doer of the world, when you do the word, you prosper in all your ways. Can you pray to God and ask God, Father, help me, O God, to receive your word. Help me to run with your word. And let me be a doer of the world that the world will produce. What are the things you need? Money, clothing, food, shelter, accommodation, and all that, that the world may produce. That the word be produced. Skadaoshki, Simande Leborushia, Rahazura Bezika Tushkin, Rabado Zebra Lebara Sakatushi Palabadoskia, Yababa Sol to their father, let the Rema, let the revelation of the road, let the reality of the road. Let it be quick in us. Let it come alive to, in us, God. Let us run with the road. Let us profit with the road. Let us, oh God, take the road. Let us run with the word and let the word do us good. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Let's get ready for the communion. Shall we rise up on our feet even as we get ready to partake of the, uh, the Lord's table? 
Father, we thank you for the, 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 the elements, the bread and the wine, the body, and which represent the body and the blood of Jesus. Father, Lord, as we participate and partake of this, let this element to God bring first illumination to us. Let it bring insight to us. Let it reveal Jesus to us. Let it take away sicknesses and infirmities. Take away every mental block. Where we have mental block, where we can't think, where we can, where we have uh, difficulty to assimilate or difficulty to understand what the Spirit is devoted to us. Let all such mental blocks be taken away. Reveal Jesus to us, O God, and let us run with this. Father, I pray for as many, O God, as have a challenge or the other. By reason of this communion, let those issues of challenges be gone. Lord, you do not rain down physical naira or money. You give ideas. And when we run with the ideas, we we'll prosper. Father, Lord, let this communion, O God, illuminate our thoughts, illuminate our imagination, illuminate our creativity. Lead us even to areas that when we do, we we'll receive income. Let this be our portion and experience in Jesus' name. Once you serve the communion, break the bread, eat, and take one.
strive to study the Bible. I don't know how it, it is, but since the beginning of this year, it's been it's been like a struggle to read the Word. Let us find time. There's no time. And a lot of us are used to our phones. We should we still have Bibles? Let us find time. Even if we read a chapter a day, it's a verse a day. Let's find time to read God's Word. Praise the Lord. And this message, we're talking about prosperity. Everything is in the Word. So it is the Word that we know that we work for you. Thank you or not. It's just the official paper one that is 9 a.m. Service starts at 7.30. Because that is when the Holy Spirit begins to move in our midst. So please join us at 7.30 as we kick off the prayer revolution. And then 9 a.m. Join us. I'm sure you'll be blessed that you did. Praise the Lord. Um, of course, this month of March, our night vigil, every third Friday of the month, we have our night vigil. And the vigil for this month will be coming up on the 18th of March. The time is 11 p.m. The venue is here. And of course, we'll be streaming live as well. So for our online viewers, you can follow us as well. And I know we're having a, we'll have a glorious time in God's presence. This uh, March edition of our night vigil, God is set to do his good. Praise the Lord. Alright, uh, maybe Pastor will be right now, but for now, the um, men's convention that uh, we had earlier on announced that will be taking place on the 20th will now be um, what's what, postponed or put on, hold. put on hold for now and then the next date will be announced for So for now, our men's convention, which was meant to come up on the 20th of March, is put on hold for now. Communicate an appropriate date to you. God bless you. We are not missing any. All right, there. Um, School of the Spirit. For well, those of us have started, it's every first Saturday of the month. So we've we done the March edition. Please be reminded of the April. Oh, I'm sorry. Last Saturday. Yes. Thank you. The last Saturday of the month. We've done the February edition too for this uh, March. The last Saturday. Um, for this match, the School of the Spirit will hold at um, number 42 Association Avenue. That's our headquarters. The time is 12 noon. Please, for the students, the School of the Spirit, please take notes and make yourself available. Can we rise up on our feet as we bring the service to the We welcome everyone and for our online followers, we welcome you as well. God bless you. We believe that tonight you have received the word that you will run with. So run with the words, you will have a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. And for every one of us that are here, that have here tonight, the blessing that comes with presence, we will not miss it in the mighty name of Jesus. Every time we are here before God, we come into his presence. There's always a special package because we have run the extra mile. So for every one of us that are present here tonight, we will not miss that special package, that special blessing for each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's just open our mouths and begin to give glory back unto God. But tonight, for the word that we have heard tonight, tonight we have come and truly he has equipped us with his word. Our midweek service is start equipping the saints. So every time we come, we pick the word. Not maybe more than one, two, three. However, but we always pick something because we have been equipped for the work ahead. And not just for the work ahead, but also for our lives to bring God glory. And in this month of wonders, awesome world wonders of his glory, we testify in the mighty name of Jesus. Just give glory back unto God and say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you that you are here tonight. Thank you that your presence tonight. Thank you for that which I have received of you tonight. Father, I give you praise. I give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for all our members. We thank you for those that are following or even those that will watch much later. We thank you because of the revelation of your word, the rhema of your word that you receive even from tonight's service. We give you praise. We give you glory. Lord, we do not depart from your presence as we go back to go and study the world. We want to have deeper insight and to receive the one that is for us to run with. Father, in the name of Jesus, the devil will not steal such time from us in the name of Jesus. We will make that time and we will go into your word. And Lord, you will speak to us and you will confirm your words in our life in the name of Jesus. As we go tonight, Lord, your presence will go with us. What, um, let our destination safe and sound. And as we lay down to sleep tonight, our sleep shall be sweet, our sleep shall be peaceful 
in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. You are so good to us. You are so good to us. Lord, we are grateful. We are blessed to be called your children. We are blessed to be called your own. We are blessed to be the carriers of your glory, the ones radiating your glory. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever in Jesus' name. For the Lord shows the path of life, for in his presence there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. You are blessed. Shalom.